I'm just getting ready to interview Elle, Dr. Anthony Chafee's girlfriend. She's here. I have turned my apartment upside down. We've got lights and cameras. Let's go grab her. Ask everything about her carnival journey, her relationship with Dr. Anthony Chafee. So let's go down. Yes, I always feel nervous when I have to interview a guest, but I just, I've prepped, I'm good. I can't even talk. She's like a proper model. Hey, Elle. Let's start the interview. Hey Elle, welcome. Thank you for having me. Well, everyone, this is Dr. Anthony Chafee's girlfriend, Elle. Now you are the first live guest that I've had on my channel, so thank you so much for being here. <laughs> thank you, I feel really privileged. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm very privileged that you've made the time to come <laughs> here in Turkey. Now I know that you've had such an amazing transformation on Carnival, yeah. and you've also had some real struggles. So today I wanna to talk to Elle about her time when she was a non-carnivore to meeting Dr. Chafee, who we know is a strict carnivore, and your journey towards becoming 100% strict carnivore with your ups and downs. Because many of my viewers, they're either new to carnivore or they have been carnivore and their family and friends probably don't follow the same lifestyle. So yeah. the first question I wanna ask you is, how much did you know about carnivore before meeting Dr. Anthony Chafee? I knew absolutely nothing. So when we first met, I he said we met for the first time and he started talking about it and I was like this guy is crazy like he sounds like a serial killer what am I getting myself into like this is horrible like I was just like red flags everywhere in Perth like it was just so unheard of and I was like this guy has had a, a strange obsession with meat like this is just so bizarre but the more I, I looked into it and spoke to him about it you know it sort of beca became something that you know, I was really intrigued about and just wanted to give it a try. And yeah, that's that's how, that's what I thought about it in the beginning. So what did you think about Dr. Anthony Chafee is famous for saying that vegetables are killing us. Yeah. What do you think about that? Plants are trying to kill you. It's really funny. I I agree, like he has a lot of studies to, to back up what he says. Um, I trust what he says and, and know that what he says is, is correct. You know, I think over time, like, you, you know, some people aren't going to see the, the side effects, the bad side effects of it straight away, but they will later on down the track. And yeah, so I, I agree. I mean, it's really funny because he says it at every conference that he speaks at or like any, you know, conversation that he has with someone, he, he will say it and I'm just like, oh, here we go again. He's saying it again, but it's, it's quite funny. I think for many people, it can sound a little bit extreme to say, that, to say that plants are trying to kill us because for so long, we've been told that plants are good for us. You know, the green stuff is good, the fiber and all the nutrients. So I think that when you first hear it, it can be like, okay. But once you hear it over and over, mm. I think it gets a bit, okay, yeah, we know that vegetables have oxalates, <laughs> the anti-nutrients yeah. and all the rest of it. Yeah. But I was also curious that when you first met Dr. Chafee and that first date, because with my partner and I, we've been with each other for five years yeah. and I wasn't carnival back then. Mm -hmm. And he took me out for cocktails, mm -hmm. although I don't drink alcohol. How was your first date with Dr. Anthony Chafee? Where did he take you and what did you do? You know, honestly, like I think the, f the first meal we had together was just him cooking a steak at his house. And he, he said to me like, I'm gonna cook you the best steak you've ever had. You're gonna, and I'm just like, this guy is so cocky. Like, how can he just be like, this is the best steak. Like, I'm just like, that's so stupid. I was like, yeah, whatever, okay. And I was a little bit worried because I'm like, you know, am I gonna get, am I still gonna be hungry? Like, you know, I never get full on just meat. You know, I normally have vegetables and dessert and all that sort of stuff with it. And so I ended up going there. I was like, it's just gonna be one night. Like, who, you know, who cares? I'll just give it a try. And it honestly was the best steak that I have ever had in my entire life. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I, have realized that I've been having steak wrong this entire time. It was just amazing. It tastes like chocolate cake. Like it was just, really? I just don't know how, the way he makes it, like when I make it, it just never tastes that good. I don't know what he does differently. I try to do everything the same, but it's, yeah, it never tastes as good as his. And yeah, but that's what we did. And um, I was like, this is amazing. I love meat. And then, yeah, every time I we caught up and stuff like that, he just, cook meat and we'd eat and, and yeah that's all we do but that was our that was our first date i think was just him cooking me a meal that's interesting that you said that the steak was like a chocolate cake because yes. i would love like that moorish and that good yeah 
I have no idea how to cook a steak, so if anybody out there has a great recipe on how to cook a steak so that it's Moorish and delicious, please share it in the comments. But I think that's a really good starting point if you have that first steak and it tastes great. And then how did you then transition to wanting to be carnival? Was it pressure at the beginning, especially because Dr. Chafee is strict carnival. Mm. Did you feel that you needed to just be carnival because he was? Well, we had this little joke going in the beginning. So he would, he'd be like, you know, if I, if I find out that you've had, you know, like anything else other than meat, then I'm going to like tickle you to death. Aww. And his, his tickles, are like, because he's so strong, it's like, it's a bit much. So yeah, he'd do that. And I'm like, okay, like it sort of made me not, you know, eat other stuff. But then, I don't know, I just started to, to feel really good and see the benefits from it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this actually works. So I want to touch like on now in terms of the beginning stages of exploring carnivore, eating more meat. I don't think many people talk about the real challenges. They talk yeah. about the great things because there's so many great things about going carnivore. Mm. We've both experienced it. But the challenges around the ups and downs of carnivore, can you yeah. talk more about what was your biggest challenge if you're thinking at the start of your carnivore journey? I think the biggest challenge for me was feeling different. You know, when I would go out with my friends and, you know, they'd be having dessert and all that sort of stuff. And I'm like, oh, I just I really don't want to go back to that again. I don't want to do that. And then just get, getting sucked back into it again. You know, it was really hard for me to go, OK, no, I don't want that. Like, it's not happening. But... You know, there were plenty of times where I would just have whatever again and then feel like crap. And then I'm like, oh, why did I do that? And then I just go straight back onto it again. So you had your ups and downs. So yeah. you're saying that you started carnivore, you're eating meat yeah. and you go back to eating the carbs and the yeah. sugars. Yeah, definitely. So how many times did you go back and forth? Uh, that, that went on for months. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it went on for months. Like it took it took a long time to feel like I was in control of cravings and all that kind of thing. Because, you know, I am quite a social person, so I'm going out a lot with my friends and you know, it's it's hard to to feel out of place. You know, as a as a girl, like you wanna fit in. Um, but then I, I you know, I I sort of got to a point where I'm just like, I just don't really care anymore. And a lot of the time, you know, if I was to go out and order something, my friends would sort of wait and see what I'd order. And they're like, yeah, I'll just get the same thing. So oh, that's really that's cool. So nice. So your friends yeah. are very supportive and I guess helping you along the journey. Yeah. And I know that from previous conversations that you've had sugar addiction. Really Sh bad. Yeah. Was it carb addiction or sugar addiction? Sugar. Sugar. Yeah. yeah. I had the same thing. Yeah. So how did you deal with that, especially when you were just eating meat? Mm. How did you deal with the sugar addiction? Well, because it was lollies, candy, whatever you want to call it, um, I, I weaned off by just having fruit and that sort of filled my sugar addiction really well to, to not go back to that again. Um, but yeah, it was just the fruit and then slowly weaned off the fruit. So. You know, every now and then I still sometimes might have a little bit here and there because my kids aren't 100% carnivore. Mm -hmm. So I have to have other things in the house. I don't have to, but, you know, I just, I choose to have other things in the house for them. Um, and, you know, there'll be times where I'm just like, oh, I'll be preparing something for my daughter and I'm like, oh, I'm just like cutting up fruit. I'm like, oh, just have one little thing. Because that's a real thing that people deal with if you have kids, if you have to yeah. have fruit or candies or something in the fridge or in your house. How do you deal with that temptation? So you're saying that sometimes you do have a little bit. It's hard, but you know, the, the strange thing is, is that my kids, I don't know, I don't know what it is. I don't know if this happens to other people, but they ask for certain things. I, I don't have like candy and stuff in the house. Like that doesn't happen. It's more just like fruit mm -hmm. and, you know, just maybe like little crackers or something like that if they want that, but very minimal with the carbs. And um, that's actually really good because yeah. I think a lot of the time kids are so addicted to sugars and carbs and processed foods and wanting to eat out. I mean, I used to love to have Maccas. McDonald's, <laughs> I call it Maccas. It's the Aussie. Yeah. Maccas. I used to love to have Maccas all the time. So I think that's great that your kids, they don't have like any of those cravings. That's wonderful. Yeah, it is really good. Like, um, my, if my, like I say to them, if you want to have something, just go and have it out. Like, I don't really want that in the house mm. and they're fine with that. But, um, you know, most of the time I'll buy stuff and then it just never gets eaten anyway. Okay. So I think it's, they just like the thought of having that option. And then, 
the, now that the option's there, they're like, okay, the option's there, but now I don't want it. So a lot of the time, the fruit just ends up all getting chucked in the bin. What was the other struggles that you've had thinking right at the beginning, your ups and downs? Because now you're pretty strict carnival, right? Yeah, I'm pretty strict now. How yeah. long it took you from the time that you started to the point now that you're pretty strict? How long was that journey? I've been doing it for almost two years. So I don't know, I think for the first six months, it was probably really hard. Okay. Yeah, really hard for me. So that's something that people can expect, especially when you first start. I think a lot of people, they start and then they do it perfectly for a week or two or even a month and they think, oh, I went and I ate something. And I think that can be quite normal because even for you that you're saying yeah. it's six months yeah. of going back and forth, back and forth mm -hmm. before you actually make that commitment to be serious. Yeah. What made you want to get serious about doing carnival? I think just seeing the health benefits from it and listening to more of what Anthony says, like he, he talks a lot about these things and it sort of gets drilled into my head. So I'm like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. So now subconsciously, like when I go out or go and do something, I'm like, oh, like I don't want to feel sick. I know that's going to damage my body down, down the track in the long run. Um, I want to have a long life expectancy and be healthy and things like that. So I think that's just almost feels like a religion for me like you know I grew up quite a religious person and you know being told something so many times you're just like okay yep that makes sense like all that kind of thing so now it feels like that for me I think it, it, it makes sense that when you have somebody that is such a strong supporter of a cause yeah like you've got Dr. Chafee around you all the time he's great yeah he's great so he's the going to be the one that's going to support you how would you help people that are the only ones in the home that are carnivore and everybody else eats the other food, how would you help them to stay on track with carnivore? You know, I think it's just being a good example, you know, because I, I have kids that aren't 100% carnivore and I just try my best to be a good example and, you know, make recipe, like make um, different foods that suit them and that they will enjoy. But yeah, I mean, it's hard if you're the only one. I mean, I've got Anthony, so he, he's, you know, I, a really good supporter of it all and, and pushes me to, to, to be healthy and at my best. When you don't have that from someone else, I don't know, I find that, you know, I think that would be really challenging. And I think, you know, joining communities, carnival communities and things like that are really helpful for that kind of thing. You know, trying to get involved in, in a carnival like a group and, um, you know, building those friendships with people in your area. To, to help you and support you with that is probably the best way to go. Now, as Elle is saying, being part of a carnival community is so important. Because let's face it, the carnival diet is very simple, but staying on track in the long term can be a little bit tricky. And that's why I have created a supportive carnival group. Every single month we have new four week fat loss challenges, and that's gonna help you build muscle and drop fat. We also have a 10 year carnival nutritionist to help you with troubleshooting, including side effects like fatigue, headaches, even leg cramps. Also questions about ketosis and glucose levels. And every single month, I get on the best carnival experts, including Dr. Anthony Chafee, Dr. Elizabeth Bright, and Dr. Robert Kiltz. Now I'm gonna leave a link in the description so that you guys can get 20% off and start the July challenge. I'll see you guys there. The more groups that I can get on, the more people I can speak to about carnival, it does help because my partner's not carnival. Yeah. None of the people that we hang around with are carnival. My family, I don't talk about it with my family. Does your family support you with carnival? They're, honestly, they don't They don't mind. Yeah. Oh, you're so lucky. Yeah. They never say anything bad about that I know of. I don't know if they say stuff behind closed doors, but I don't really care at the same time. But yeah, they're, they're fine with it. I mean, They've never really said otherwise. And was there any other struggles that you've had during your, your process of starting a carnival lifestyle? Anything else that was difficult for you that people don't generally talk about? I was never really addicted to carbs. Like carbs for me wasn't really a thing. It was just the sugar. Yeah. That was really hard for me. In the beginning, and I, I know a lot of people, like when they're coming off the sugar and things like that, they start to feel quite lethargic and, and they start to feel a little bit sick. I think it's hard to, to sort of get through those first couple of weeks. But once you get past that, it just it becomes so much easier after that. Well, yeah. we're going to take a break and then we're going to play a little game called Carnival Cards with Elle. So we're going to see you very soon. Welcome back, everyone. We've just had a bit of a chat. I've learned some new things about Elle that I didn't know before, so we're going to talk about that. But we're going to play a bit of a game called Carnival Cards with Elle. <laughs> I have some cards here. 10 
controversial topics that Elle hasn't seen. So I'm gonna give one to you each time, and then you're gonna tell me your opinion. You mm -hmm. can show it to the camera, show everyone, and tell me your opinion about the topic. So okay. are you ready? Yeah, sounds good. Okay, <laughs> let me give you this one. What's this one? Carnivores don't fart. 100%, I have, I, I agree with that. I, I have never heard Anthony fart, ever. <laughs> He's, he's, I've, I've known him for such a long time now and he's, I've never heard him fart once. So I completely agree. Do you, and you? What do you think? But like, I think I only do want to have dairy. Yeah. So that's something that we spoke about earlier on about dairy. Elle was saying, so tell them what you said about dairy. Yeah, I was just saying, um, you know, I, I try and not have dairy because I just break out really badly on my face. Um, and then I get really bloated uh, for some reason. I don't know why, it, it must be the carbs in the dairy, but yeah, it just doesn't agree with me at all. I said the same thing with dairy, whether it be Greek yogurt, labna because we're in Turkey, milk, cream, anything that's dairy, even to the extent of butter. I was saying that, you know, I was doing the stick of butter, increasing the butter and I was getting a bit of eczema on my arm. Mm. So I think, yeah, the dairy, it can have a lot of side effects, including farting. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, ready for the next one? Yeah, let's do the next one. Vegetables are trying to kill us. Vegetables are killing us. Yeah, 100%, I agree with that. You know, this is something that Anthony says all the time. It's his famous words, you know, plants are trying to kill you. Um, yeah, I completely agree with that. You know, I think sometimes you don't see, you know, the effects of it killing you straight away. You know, it's more a long-term thing. It's like they're slowly killing us, you know, the, Anthony has quite a lot of studies and things to, to back up what he says, and I completely agree with that. Me too. I didn't think that plants were trying to kill us, but now I do, and I stay away <laughs> from them, and I feel so much better. <laughs> okay, this is, this is a good one. What's this one? Honey on carnivore. Yeah, that's a, that, I mean, that's a hard one because there are so many people out there that are carnivore that still have honey. I personally don't, but... You know, I guess if it's sub, if it's better than, I mean, it is a type of sugar, isn't it? So oh, I don't know. I I think it's best not to have it. But I do know a lot of carnivores that do still have honey, and they seem to be okay with it. I think you just have to go with you know how your body feels on it, and and if you're having reactions to it, or it's it's leading you back down like a carb hole or something like that, then definitely stay away from it. But yeah, I mean, I personally think no for me. No what for, about you? No for me. Yeah. <laughs> There's no way. If I have honey, and that's what Anthony Chafee also says as well, if you have the honey, I mean, obviously some people do quite well, and we know that a certain person does us fabulous on honey, but it leads to that, you know, next thing you're eating, you know, more honey, and then some other carbs come in, and then yes. the chocolates, the candy, McDonald's, all these different things, and then next thing you know, you're kind of back to that original spot of mm -hmm. where you were previously. So. You do have to be a bit careful. I think we understand our background, which is sugar addiction. Yeah. And having that addictive personality, I think that could easily escalate to something that is to a huge problem. So no, this one is hilarious. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Carnivore increases sex drive. Mm. I mean, I, I personally haven't noticed a difference in myself, um, but I actually, it's, Funny that, that um, you asked that because I do have a client and we she's she's gone kind of when she spoke about this and she was like, oh my gosh, like I just want to have sex all the time. And I was like, that's crazy. Like I haven't noticed a difference, but I, I guess it just depends on the sex drive. If you already have a high sex drive, like a, you're probably not going to notice a difference, but maybe if you have a low sex drive, it might help. I think so, yeah. especially if you have your hormones are not regulated. So your testosterone, progesterone, estrogen, there is something about when that regulates your sex drive, your hormones regulate as well. I know when I spoke to Dr. Elizabeth Bright, she talks a lot about that, that over 90% of women can't orgasm. Wow. So what feeding fat does and giving your body nutrients, it actually regulates your hormones so that, you know, your brain's going to get better, your gut function, you, all your organs are going to start getting better. Also, your sex drive is also going to improve. So that could be the reason why your friend... Um, has a better sex yeah, drive as well. crazy. Okay, this one is interesting. People, okay, I'll get your opinion. Calories don't matter. Yeah, I mean, this, this is something that people speak about all the time. I mean, I've never been someone who counts calories or anything like that. Like, yeah, I don't think, I don't think they matter. Like if you're eating meat, if you're, if you're 
incorporating a lot more red meat into your diet. Like you shouldn't have to be counting calories. If you have to look on the back of a uh, you know package to to look and see what's in it, like it's obviously not going to be good for you because you're worried about what's going to be in that thing. Like why stress and worry about that when you can just have meat and I love that. Worry. I love that. I stressed and worried for 20 years. <laughs> um, I counted calories a lot, actually. And I was under eating. And that's a huge issue with a lot of, especially women and men, under eating. Because when you're counting calories, I mean, it can be a measure of how much you're eating. But ultimately, as you said, if you're looking for what's in it, you're probably eating the wrong thing. Mm hmm because uh, anything that has a package probably has a lot of ingredients and yeah. is not the best for you. But if you're just eating beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, yeah. you eat until you feel satiated. So, you know, and calories. Then not, and then you're not worrying, yeah, about what's in there. You're not worrying. Yeah. And part of it is the stress about being on a diet and having to overthink things. I think the great thing mm. about Carnival, you don't have to overthink. Yeah. All you have to do is just eat delicious meat, yeah. <laughs> put some butter on it, and be happy. Yeah. Speaking about butter, Butter boobs, what are butter boobs? Okay, so the butter boobs is what Dr. Elizabeth Bright spoke about, which is when you eat more butter, when you eat more fat, especially for a woman, your body fills out. Your hips get round, get more curvier, your boobs get a bit fuller. So I was just curious if you've ever come across a, across butter boobs or if you've experienced it at all, because I haven't. I mean, I've, I've never heard of this before, so I'm definitely gonna pay attention and see if I notice a difference but well increase yeah. your butter and then see if it happens because <laughs> this is something that we've seen a lot when people increase their fat that they're, they're like oh my skin is getting healthier it doesn't have to be just the added butter it can just be more fat coming from your fatty meat but definitely the fat is going to fill you out and make you look more glowy and beautiful so yeah. that's the butter boobs awesome okay this one is yeah let's see carnivore is killing the planet Ugh. Yeah, I mean, you, you're going to be hearing this from like vegans and vegetarians. <laughs> yeah, and, and cows, you know, farting, whatever, you know, is affecting global warming. Yeah. Like it's just, it's just ridiculous. And, and no, I don't think carnivore is killing the planet at all. Like one thing that people forget to realize is, you know, like they, they talk about how, you know, um, the land that they use for, you know, holding you know that different animals that we eat is is destroying the planet and and you know using up so much of the land but you're destroying so many acres and you know so much land for for crop and that you you know to to actually put in crop and make that space for that for them you, you're killing off a lot of animals and their homes and all that kind of thing That's you true. know they're using pesticides and different things to kill off like rabbits and foxes or whatever whatever it is you know different kinds of animals to stay off your farmland it's true and i i heard this um a stat about how much killing has to happen for somebody to build an avocado farm yeah you know my grandfather you know had a farm and um you know he would he would put wheat in and you know he had a massive rabbit problem you know and he had to try and what a rabbit a problem? rabbit problem of Why? rabbits going in and eating his really? crop so he'd have to try and do something to try and you know kill off these rabbits to stop oh. them from eating crop you know it's just things like that happen wow I didn't and they don't really think about that so how many rabbits had had to die to you know to give you the wheat that you're you're wanting to eat kind of thing like it's it's I warm. never actually thought about that, but now that you said it, well, yeah, it's crazy. this is this one is interesting. McDonald's burger patties, yes, one hundred percent. The Angus beef patties are so you delicious. Eat the Angus beef patties, yes, oh. and Hungry Jacks. I go to Hungry Jacks and McDonald's. Hungry Jacks burgers are really like the beef patties are really good as well. With cheese or no cheese? With cheese. I think it kind of tastes love a little. Her. It's too it's too dry. Otherwise, like I you need you need something with it. I, I love it. Yeah, I love, I, we do, we do um, two pieces of cheese and then a patty, two pieces of cheese, a patty, but trying to explain that. Two pieces of cheese and a yes. patty. Wow, yeah. that's a lot. Yeah, so oh. I, we do it like that, two okay. cheese and then a patty, Delicious. two cheese and a patty. It's so good. Okay, so a, um, a follow-on question for this. Coke Zero, any diet sodas? Uh, no way. Okay, good. No way. No. No, no diet, no sodas or anything like that at all. We only drink water. Okay. Yeah. Because the diet sodas is going to affect you with your sugar addiction and 100%. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, a lot of people say that with McDonald's macros patties, <laughs> that you know the way that McDonald's sources their meat is not good, or the storage something that they hate about it. Have you seen that as well? No, I haven't.
haven't okay. seen that. Are they, are they worried about like what it's cooked in? What it's cooked in, but I was told that the McDonald's burger patties is just cooked straight on the grill. Yeah, no straight seed, on the grill. It's straight on, yep. straight on the grill. No seed oils. Yep. But there is a lot of, especially on Twitter and on Instagram, they say that just how they prepare and the processing, the preservatives that they put in the burger patties as well. No, that's not true. Like, you know, they, they claim um, that the patties are 100% beef patties, like nothing else added in there. And, you know, I... I I think that that is right. Well, I'm happy. If she's happy, I'm happy. <laughs> McDonald's burger patties. Also, I heard that Wendy's. We, we don't have a Wendy's in Turkey, but there's a Wendy's in the US. But yes. So Wendy's is another good option for burger right. patties. So, oh, and also somebody in Canada said A&W. A&W. It's a, it's a franchise. It, it's a fast food franchise in Canada that's great for burger patties. So, and you know what? It makes carnival easy then because yeah. if you, I find that if it's too strict, if I can't enjoy certain things like this, mm -hmm. then it's, you know, too hard. But if you just, you know, you're still eating beef, you're yeah. still eating good quality meat. Yes, you can get better quality by going to a triple A grade butcher and getting, mm -hmm. getting the grass fed. That's another question. Grass fed or grain fed? Honestly, it doesn't even bother me. I'm, I, I'm, I'm not. Grateful. I'm not big. I'm not big on that kind of thing. Me too. Yeah. Why? It's just once again, like you just you're looking at what it is. Let's just have just have red meat. Like it's. I don't know. I, I actually find that grain fed tastes better. We actually did a cooking class not that long ago, and he had grass fed and grain fed beef. I'm pretty sure, and they're like, "Oh, can you taste the difference?" I honestly couldn't taste the difference. Oh, okay. So I can because can you? the, the grass-fed is gamier. Ah, uh -huh. I think they say that, but I can't. I can't notice the difference. Well, that's good. Grass-fed. <laughs> okay, next one. I fell for this no, trap. At no the start. exercise on carnivore. Yeah, I mean, I personally don't exercise that much. Like, I I'm pretty lazy with exercise, and I don't understand how Anthony still looks so good, and he barely he barely exercises. And so you don't need to exercise on carnival that much. I mean, it's always good to still try and stay active and things like that. But you don't, I don't, I don't feel like it's, you don't need to, but it's, it's good to. I feel the same way. I think it's good to exercise for the mental health benefits. Yeah. A lot of the time that we've been told to exercise for fat loss, exercise yeah. for body composition, it's great to build muscle. Building muscle to make sure that you gain strength so that when you're older, you're not gonna get arthritis, osteopenia, all those different things. Yes. I used to exercise to burn calories, which we don't have to do, but mm -hmm. for the mental health benefits, the strength benefits, to make you feel good, sleep better and be stronger, exercise is fantastic. Yeah, but being a good routine as well. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, but I, I think you know, you're gonna look great if you're on strict carnivore, you're gonna look even better if you exercise and are carnivore. I should start my exercise routine. <laughs> okay, last one. This is number 10 is the most interesting. And I'm sure that many of you out there are wondering, Elle and Dr. Chafee, if Dr. <laughs> Chafee is watching this, what, uh, what's the question? When is the big day? Yeah, I mean, this, I, you're going to have to ask Anthony that one. I have no idea. I mean, I'm not, I'm not that fussy when it comes to you know, I, I was in a relationship for 15 years before meeting Anthony and I was married. So I guess I've been there. I've done that. Um, so I know how it feels and don't really feel that different when you're married. I mean, it's nice to have that full commitment. But um, yeah, I mean, it would be nice. So I don't know. <laughs> sometime, <laughs> maybe sometime in the future. But I mean, I feel the same way that I think being married is great. I don't know. It's just, I think it's nice. It's, it's, it's a nice feeling to be married. You don't have to have it. I would love for you to be married because I think it's fantastic. <laughs> and I always speak to Dr. Chafee and say, when are you and Elle getting married? So <laughs> fingers crossed it happens very, very soon. So thanks for playing the game. That was a lot of fun. Let's talk about the bright side of carnival, which is where you're at now. Mm -hmm. What is your feeling and energy now being strict carnival? Absolutely amazing. You know, I was someone that suffered from very low energy and low iron levels previously. And I feel absolutely amazing now. You know, I also the, a few other things that I suffered from was um, psoriasis and dermatitis. Um, I used to have it in the back of my head and I used to scratch it all the time. And it was so frustrating. I'd go to the, the doctor and he'd say that there was no cure for that. You know, I'd have these antibiotic drops that he would give me and I'd have to apply that to my head multiple times a day. Wow. And 
I did that for years, ever since I was in high school. And it was just so frustrating. I'd be Googling all these different types of things that I could do to try and get rid of it. And it was just something that I felt like I was gonna have for the rest of my life. That completely went away within the first month of being carnivore. And that wasn't even being strict carnivore. That was just incorporating more meat into my, my diet mm. or my you know, eating routine. And it, it went away and I was just like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Something that I suffered from for so long. It was so frustrating. The other thing that I only just recently realized that I was cured from was chillblains. Apparently, from what we're told, it's from you know certain parts of our body being exposed to the cold too much and then having poor blood circulation to those parts of your body. So like you'll find a lot of people get them on their on their toes, their nose, their fingers. It's where you have these um, these itchy sore bumps um, on your nose, fingers, or toes or ears as well. Some people get them and they just won't go away. And you, I, I used to have them every single winter, even during summer, sometimes I'd get them. Mm. And you know, it made it difficult for me to wear shoes. I'd, I'd only get them on my feet, on my toes, and I'd be itching them through the night. It was just, oh, it was so awful. And I, I, I had it for such a long time. My mum had it. I, I think it ran in my family, I'm not too sure. And the only thing that they'd say to me was, just wear socks, you know, put a hot water bottle on your feet, like it will go away. It never helped. It never cured it. It never helped it. It never prevented it. And I only just noticed, like only, I don't know, maybe a few months ago, I was like, I haven't had chill veins for ever since I, like I was saying, Anthony, I haven't had chill veins ever since I've met you. That is crazy. That's amazing. And I was really worried because I went back to America and saw snow for the first time. Oh yeah, I saw and that on Instagram. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to get chill veins, I'm going to get chill veins. Like I haven't had it this, you know, so far and I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm going to get it when I go into the snow for sure. It didn't happen and I put my hands, my feet straight onto the cold snow and I never got it. The doctors say that it's to do with poor blood circulation or being exposed to the cold, but I honestly don't think it is. Honestly, I think it's got everything to do with diet. It's, it's interesting because um, you're flying home today, going back yeah. to Perth, Australia. You've got a 17 hour flight. What are you gonna do for food? I've got some like pork crackle and I've got um, beef jerky and stuff like that in my bag. At the airports they have McDonald's, McDonald's and stuff like that. Or they'll have like a kebab shop here. I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure in the airport. So I'll just go and stock up on like a, some donor meat and then okay because that's an, a common question is that when you are kind of one street kind of when you have to travel most people don't have to do a 17 hour flight mm. but it is tricky finding clean carnival foods and sometimes it doesn't have to be that yeah. clean yeah is that what you think as well yeah like if, if you're in a situation where you're yeah in the airport or you're in a foreign country and they don't have exactly what you're after as long as you're still incorporating a lot of meats into your diet, you're going to be okay. You might have a reaction sometimes, like everyone's body's different. You may have a reaction to the oils or whatever they use, on the, but it's still going to be better than having the other stuff. And that's the way I look at it. I think that Dr. Ken Berry said, and I have to get this right, um, a lot of people major in the minor. Mm -hmm. So they think about the tiny little things yeah. that make some small difference, yeah. but not a huge difference. But what, what you want to do is to care about what matters. The majority of the time, you can eat meat at home. You can eat clean sources of meat, but it's the minority where you're out traveling, where you don't have the control about the quality of the meat. Do the best that you can. Yeah. Well, the other thing we normally do is we dehydrate, um, or I put them in the air dryer, um, steak. So oh. Anthony and I will cut up steak or we'll do like little pork chips or something like that. Well, Elle, how can people out there, because I'm sure they want to follow you, see your life, see what you're eating, see what you're doing. <laughs> how can they find you? You can just find me on Instagram. Um, we'll probably just link the... All the links link. are going to be yep. in the description. Um, so there. And um, I do have a YouTube channel. I'm, I do have a podcast that I... I I've only got, got a few episodes on that. I'm trying to find the time to get on top of doing that as well. But, um, but mainly just Instagram, I'm probably most active on that. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Elle, for being here. Yeah. And um, it was so nice to see you in Turkey. Like, what are the chances that you're in Turkey? <laughs> I message you and then you say yes. So this was wonderful. Yeah, thank you for awesome. being the first live guest on my channel. You're very welcome. I hope Thanks you did a good job. <laughs> we'll see you all next week. Bye, everyone. Bye.